Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Bleed Lows podcast. I am your host for today, Jason Barquero, or the Boatman, as uh, Juan likes to call me on this show. I'm filling in for Juan this evening, and I'm joined by, as always, of course, Roger Arieta. But we have a very, very special guest host today as well, co-host, and that is Elisa Hernandez, who you guys all know probably from the past episodes <laughs> here at the Carne Asada. So, Elisa, welcome. Thanks for being back. Thanks for having me. It's been a while since I got a full plate of you guys. So, you know, I got to make sure I come visit the family every now and then. Yeah, because you have to update your title every time you show up. It seems <laughs> like you just keep adding uh, and you're making it hard for me. So I didn't give you the proper intro. But for folks that don't know, and if you don't know, you don't recognize his face, then you then you obviously don't go to Dodger Stadium very, very often. <laughs> Elisa Hernandez is the Dodger Stadium host. She's also now, and congratulations on this new role, um, a Sunday Night Football field producer for Telemundo. So congratulations on that. Before I know this is the Dodgers podcast, but before we get into that, <laughs> t- tell me a little bit about that new role. I think folks are excited for you, people that know you, because you've become a staple at Dodger Stadium, by the way. Yeah. And um, I think we love to keep up with what you're doing. So tell us what's going on in Telemundo. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's, it's one jump to another, right? It's like, trust me, the guys in the clubhouse are very invested in football. As you guys know, they do their fantasy football leagues. They get very into it. So it definitely goes hand in hand. Um, But yeah, I cover Sunday night football for Telemundo Deportes. I'm their field producer there. So I am at every Sunday night football game um, every week. So a new city, new stadium every week. Uh, We go to New York uh, this week and then we visit a couple of cool stadiums that I'm happy to get to cross off the list. So really excited. And obviously um, it's a very different pace from baseball, right? Because baseball is like you get your heart broken but then you know there's another chance tomorrow to get your heart broken or get your heart full so with football you just have to live with it for a whole week and as a broncos fan i've been living with a big 70 on my forehead for the last week so <laughs> oh that's right very I happy forgot. to talk about the dodgers right now yeah I have, I have not had the opportunity to tease you about that what was that about jeez you know what i have a little flag of broncos so i'm just gonna swing my head this way for the rest of the podcast <laughs> you know but yeah, it's been rough. But I guess I'm happy that we have the Dodgers and they're doing so well. They are. They are. Well, we're excited to have you. Congratulations on that. And Thank I know you're you. very busy, so we appreciate when you give us the time to come on the show. Roger, I don't know if you had anything for Lisa before we get right into it. No, just I, I keep up with her on social media. And I'm like, man, she's doing this now. She's doing that now. She's like, I'm like, I've been wanting her to have Ron for the last probably couple of months. But every time I, that's how I see her yeah. schedule. I'm like, nope, she's too busy. <laughs> She's too busy. She's too busy. I'll try this time. I wanted to have her on because we we will be dropping our 200th episode on Monday, and we did have a, a chance to get everybody that's helped out in any way with the show, and you obviously have helped out. And I wanted just to thank you personally for that, for making time to you know come on and, and talk with us some baseball. We really appreciate it and really appreciate the time. Yeah, can I just say, like, shout out to you guys. I mean, you guys this started this not too long ago. And just the amount of love and support you've gotten from not only fans, but from the players, just from everyone that's really kind of been locked into you guys. I think it's a testament of just consistency and obviously, you know, putting, you know, the time into your craft. It's not easy to produce a podcast, people. Everyone out there that says, I would just do a podcast. Trust me. It takes time. It takes effort to book guests, to book guest speakers, to book anyone, like host, all those things. So it's very hard. So honestly, congratulations to the entire Bulos family for not only growing this family so big, but, you know, really adding Latino faces to the mix. And that's really what I'm proud of and happy to help you guys anytime. And I may be busy, never too busy for you guys. Like if I don't respond, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's just because I left it unread so I can come back to it at some point. It's just taking me a while <laughs> to come back to it. But you know what? I'm always here for you guys. I'm always here. But for real, shout out to the entire crew. You guys are doing a great work and I'm really, really happy for you guys. I appreciate that, Elisa. <laughs> well, and I'm going to before we jump into it, I'm going to echo everything Elisa said, because even though I'm here today, I still feel like I'm just jumping in. I'm kind of the new guy, but I have yeah. to admit, I'm proud of the group. You're right. I'm impressed with Roger. I'm impressed with Juan, what has been built. Um, and, and I'm just honored to kind of just be able to jump right into it. But I'm impressed by how I think what Elisa said was right. The love that you're getting from the actual clubhouse, from the team, mm-hmm. from the players, broadcasters, uh, personalities, everyone around it. Um, it looks easy from the outside. Boy, they just they just they just come on the show like nobody's business. Not that easy, oh, yeah. like you said. 
Max yeah. Muncy, no problem. Get Joe I, Kelly. Like, come on. <laughs> right. It, it, these guys make it look easy, but it's not, yeah. right? And so a mm-hmm. testament to the show. It, 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 absolutely. So congratulations again on the 200. Ep- 200 is this 201 now? Uh, this will, well, since this is only on YouTube, our 200th will actually be on Monday. So Got we're trying it. to line, we're, okay. we're trying to line up, we're trying to line up a, a guest on that. That's why we're pushing it to Monday. So mm-hmm. hopefully we get it and it'll be a, a good, nice, uh, 200th episode. So I just messed I'm it up. Like... I should have said this is the 300th episode. Is what we're reporting <laughs> I'm just like, saying, we'll, look, we'll look, look out. friends out there. We had, <laughs> we have to give bleed loss their flowers because you know what? It's not easy, you know, and representation matters and having, mm-hmm. You know, these Latino faces up there, you now have Jason on there, who I've known since like forever. We used to do a podcast, wow. I also guess on his podcast, like back in 2016. And look at us now. Look at us yeah. now. I'm just saying. So shout out to everything you guys are doing. Um, and we just had to spend the first couple of minutes just giving your flowers. So make sure, make sure you you bask in the scent of the flowers we're laying at your feet <laughs> right now, Roger. Okay. It don't happen very often. Okay. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. I appreciate you. <laughs> Uh, Alisa, I haven't had a chance to tell you this privately, so I'm going to just do it here. But oh, let God. me tell you how much I appreciate it. <laughs> no, right? That that started off bad. But no, it, it's the, the what I really wanted to say. Uh, you know how much I appreciate on your Instagram posts the fact that you always have a musical tie-in and a, and a quotation and a lyric. That is impressive. I am low-key jealous of that. Like, I need to... Ha- I, I don't have... I'm sure it just comes to you. I'm not as I can't come up with that, but yeah. that, that's good. That's, I just want to say I, I I'm really impressed by that. It's a lot of fun to follow. If you don't follow Lisa, well, you you tie it in perfectly. <laughs> you do a really good job of that. So we need to do some of that. Look, we need to I, I, I have that a there. good one. If the Dodgers win the World Series, I got to go and I've been saving it. Since <laughs> Look at you. you have <laughs> <saved up. laughs> like I have, a, I have a strong one <laughs> that I'm holding on. You know, for when I I can pose with the World Series trophy. So. I'm not going to tell you guys what it is. I want to jinx it, but just know yeah. a song lyric, so a photo is definitely already in the works. Because okay. I, you know, I believe in this team. We're having a, you know, a little rough patch, but I believe in this team. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about that. D- dive right in, right? A little bit of a rough patch, if you can call it that, right? It's the last week of the regular right. season. We're spoiled. We we are right. It's almost it's almost a little boring. I was half watching today and not, you know, it's just that time of the, the year. Mm-hmm. Right. Isn't it right? And the Orioles just clinched it. Right. And they they have a great record, but a, a different division. So they just clinched. Um, but the Rocky series. Right. So we, t- today that a kind of a rough game. And but it's it was kind of to be expected or wasn't it? No. Should we make anything of what the last few games or is this kind of what you would expect from a team who's already, uh, you know, a week plus clinched into the division? Well, I think it's one of those things where, look, as Dodger fans, we want to just go undefeated, like, every year. It's like, if, if we lose one game, it's like, oh, throw the season away. You know, it's like, it's one of those, you know, we have that luxury of not stressing during the last week of the season. A lot of teams don't have that luxury. You know, a lot of teams are fighting for that, you know, spawn the wild card. They're fighting for position in the division. They're fighting for something. And us like, oh, we locked it in, like, two weeks ago. I think, you know, it's, it's expected. And, look, I want them to get any kind of, losses woes out now okay because we do have a first round buy and it's something that not necessarily works in our favor and i think as dodger fans we all have ptsd from last year right and i think as great and as amazing and as record-breaking as a season that we had we realized very quickly that means nothing come postseason right and so when you have an exit the way that we did last season for now it's just like look I'm good with our position. I'm good with our record. You know, this this week is just kind of monitoring like what's not working because that's what I want to see kind of come to fruition. And when we get into the new series, as we go into the NLDS, because it's one of those things that it is nerve wracking. And obviously, like we're we're worried about you know certain certain positions. Who's do who's going to start? How they're going to do? You know, we're always working by committee, and it's definitely worked in the Dodgers' favor for a while. And we have never shied away from the next man up mentality. That's how we create so many stars as they kind of come up and so many names um, that we had no idea, you know, game one opening day, but now it's like they're the heroes that are going to go into the postseason. So I think with the Rocky series, I think it's kind of just like, look, just kind of watch them, watch the boat. It's fine. The boat can kind of sway a little bit, but as long as we're still floating and no one gets hurt, no one goes down, I think we can breathe easy for the next couple of days. Yeah, Roger, what say you? What do you think? Yeah, I think at least um, it hit it right on the head. The biggest takeaway, obviously, is play these games. You know, nobody gets hurt. You know, you go through them, and then you, you move on to the next series. And 
and you know, I think we mentioned this last week. There's always one of those games in in Colorado that kind of gets away, and I, I think that was in the last game today. Uh, the first game kind of just felt, I don't know, just maybe the the travel. It was it was a little sluggish, right? And it was a low scoring game for Colorado, right? So that that was kind of odd. But you know, they end up splitting the series, which is fine. And now you know they're going to go on to San Francisco. I was kind of hoping they did win today because I I kind of want to see them hit that that 100 win mark. I mean, they're still two away, two out of three. They could definitely do it. But I was thinking, like, mm, do they really want to? Do they really care? You know, it's like last last three games of the season, you know, how much are they really going to put into it? So we'll see. But split, split's fine. Everything, like you said, everything's good. Everybody's healthy. And let's finish off uh, strong. Yeah, and it, and it looked for a moment that we we might be playing some type of meaningful baseball into the last into the last weekend because of the San Francisco Giants being so close to a wild card position. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're mathematically out now as of tonight, right? And so, yeah. um, bummer for the Giants, but you know it is what it is. I'm sure Dodger fans aren't too disappointed. Although it would have been nice to be the one to knock them out over the weekend, right? I'm sure that might have been fun, Elisa. I- I'm sure, right? You know. I get, yeah, it's definitely a credit. sorry, not sorry. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's definitely a sorry, not sorry. Uh, but you know what? It's like after, again, like after, la- I think it was last year, right? Where we went up there to San Francisco and we won and, you know, we had all those good moments. It's like, mm-hmm. look, I, I, just, I just, one game at a time. You know, it's like we realized very quickly, like the Dodgers rarely have the Cinderella story because we're always seen as the juggernaut, right? We're always seen as the Goliath of every series. And I think that for right now, it's like a win is a win. Look, the giants can't do nothing to us, obviously for as a pettiness and us, we can't do nothing to them. And it's like, that's fine. Like, honestly, that's fine. It's like, let's just like, let's get through these three games and let's just go into what really matters. And that's the postseason. Like these petty rivalries, guess what giants I'll see you next year. We can, we can try it again. But for now it's just like, we, we just have to focus on staying healthy. We just have to focus on developing these young guys that we're kind of throwing into the mix, into the fire right now, and seeing how that's going to kind of grow as we go into the next you know next series. And I also see, like, these teams that are looking to knock us off, too. I think that's also a big a big focal point for the team. At least, Jason, at least, oh, go ahead, Roger. Yeah. No, they were actually knocked out last night officially by the Padres. Who the Padres, who technically are not out of it yet, their elimination is number is, is is one game. I mean, just because everybody <laughs> ahead of them, the Cubs, the Marlins, they've been playing horrible. I saw Nobody a horrible. meme. They, they, I they saw. Didn't win. <laughs> I like, saw a meme, and it was like, "How?" It was like a thing from Sonic, and it was like, "How are you still alive?" And it's like MLB, and then the Padres <laughs> like, "I have no idea." It's like, but you know I'm, what? That's what I'm saying. Like, but it's always those teams. That scare me the most. Yep. It's always yeah. those teams that sneak in. It's always those teams that are just like really quiet and then they just they, they rise at the right time. You know, it's those are the teams that I've always oh, keep my eye on. Like, look, people talk about the Padres, obviously. Um, but look, once postseason comes, the regular season doesn't matter. It starts yeah. all over again. And what you're in the postseason in the, in the regular season is erased. Like, great, you got into it. Now it's now it's the next level. And what are you going to do here? And so it's baseball. Teams are constantly hitting good strides. Teams are constantly going, you know, hitting 10 game win streaks, you know, whatever it is. You get hot at the right time in the postseason. It's really hard to cool you down. And the thing with the Padres is, like I said, their elimination number is one game. So if the Cubs would have won one game, they were playing the Braves. They got swept four games. So if the Cubs would have won one game, Padres are out. Now the Marlins have snuck in there, and I think they've passed <laughs> them, and they need to win one game. And they were they were losing tonight, going into the ninth, one nothing. They end up scoring two, <laughs> and with two outs, a rain delay in New York. So I don't <laughs> I don't know I don't think they're going to continue the game today. Oh, and yes, they can't they, they can't continue tonight. it tomorrow. So they will have to continue it on Monday if they need oh, to wow. actually play that My game. My God. And this so, is like, what I mean. Like Dodger fans don't have these. One, we live in California. There's never in the lake. But right. also, we don't have these issues in the sense of, like we don't imagine that stress as a fan. Like, yeah, you have no idea what your fate is going to be. And you potentially have to wait until next week. You know what I'm saying? So, so I'm saying like these teams that sneak in. Like I'm just you know everyone. Everyone loves the Cinderella story, and everyone loves to root against the Dodgers, I, except I mean, for us. We love them. <laughs> technically, technically, if the Padres went out 3-0 over the weekend. 
and the Cubs and Marlins lose, Padres, I think, are in. Yeah, they, they I, think, I think Matt and I, I think that's right. But now they have to. Insane. Now, but now they'd have to wait till Monday to, for this completion of this game, and if the Marlins win, you know, then they wouldn't get in. So wow. I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean, that's what I'll, that's what. Yeah, that's what throws me off about baseball. There are so many games, and it always comes down to like the last five. And it's like, how does that make sense? Well, but and like you said, the wild the card. Yeah, then the way it's expanded now, the postseason over the last yeah. few years. Um, mm-hmm. It makes it exciting, but friends of mine hate when I say this, but I really believe this. Baseball is one of the flukiest sports, team sports out there. And what I mean by that is you can pretty much predict to a T who's going to be in the NBA finals or even in the oh, top yeah. four, right? Yeah. Super Football, Bowl. And NFL, same, yeah. Same mm-hmm. thing. Baseball, anyone. You can go 111 like the Dodgers did last year, and then we saw what mm-hmm. happened, right? Someone gets hot. We saw the Giants do this. I, if Giant fans hate when I say this, but I really believe yeah. two of those three championships in the last decades were a fluke. And people hate that word. Why? They won 88 <laughs> games. They had no business in the playoffs. But they got in yeah. there. They got lucky for a couple of weeks. And they're hoisting a trophy. Last year was the Phillies. They were a fluke, too. They got cut oh, my God. Yeah. And that's why I hated the one-game playoff. Because yeah. in baseball, anyone can win one game. Anyone. Yeah. can Because it's you're uh-huh. facing a pitcher. The whole lineup may suck. But if you put up one starter that throws up seven strong innings, I don't care who, what your record was, yeah. and your team isn't having it that day. So I'm glad they got rid of the one game because that was even more stress. The three yeah. game is still very stressful because you can make the argument anyone can win at best of three. Yeah, uh, but but you know it's baseball. That's yeah. what it's makes also it to speed it up though, right? Because it's like, look, it you're does. lucky to be here, so let's just get through this. So we can <laughs> go on to the NLDS. We're still talking about baseball, right? No, anyway. <laughs> yes. So- yes. <laughs> No, oh, you're right. Baseball is it's 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 it could it could break your heart. It certainly did last year with the Padres. Um, yeah. That's why when I saw that the Padres might still sneak in, I'm like, oh gosh, I, the, this I, yeah. I, I you know it gives you a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of anxiety. But I think uh, we'll be a lot okay. of a lot of anxiety. Look, I had um, I had a few friends that are Padres fans last year, and they're like, after they beat us, like, aren't you going to root with us because we're California? I'm like, no, I want you guys <laughs> to get swept. No. Like, it- I was like, you think I want you guys to win the World Series one? Do you think I want you guys to win the World Series after knocking us out? Like, I'm, I'm not that mature. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I'm not yeah. that mature. The, the most anxiety-driven World Series I can remember it was when the Angels and the Giants played each other 20-something years ago. Mm. And um, or 20 years. I don't know what year that was. Was it 02 or something like that? <laughs> um, because I hated both teams. And that's my nightmare to this day. The Angels and the Giants making the World Series is, is I think, a Dodgers nightmare. Because who do you root for? Um, and I think at the time I, I rooted for, I think I rooted for the for the for the Giants because I think I hated the Angels a little bit more than the Giants. Okay. It was weird, but it, I, I had this weird anyway. I, I don't like the Angels at all, so I just hope that doesn't happen again. But anyhow, so hold on, look, I know we're going way off the rundown, but I gotta yeah. ask Roger, what is your nightmare World Series? Yeah, um, I think anything that has the Giants in it, right? Probably the Padres. <laughs> um, I, I mean, Angels, I'm, I'm re- I remember that World Series. And I, but I was actually cool with, the, like, the Angels. It didn't bug me. Like, I was actually kind of rooting for them because I, obviously I didn't want the Giants to win. And right. the Angels had never done anything to that point. So I was like, that's fine. You know, Angels could win. <laughs> but after that is kind of when all the Angel bandwagon fans started. You know, they came uh-huh. out and then, like, oh, you know, we you guys haven't won since, uh, you know, 88. You know, they all that talk. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, you know, okay, go back, you know, kid brother or whatever, right? But I think in any... <laughs> Any World Series that has the Giants is 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 a nightmare yeah. scenario, or or even the Padres, I guess. But that, that'd that's, be it for me. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. So My moving down the line, was last year. yeah, <laughs> well, that was last year. <laughs> this is yeah, the Astros that was winning. Bad. I was just like. That That's the rough one. That is rough. If you yeah. see the Astros back in there, an Astros Giants World Series, Astros Padres, I don't know what I would do. Yeah, that would have been last year, like Astros Padres. That would have been. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That's kind of, I mean, the Philly, at least like the Phillies, it was someone to root for. You know what I mean? But like, right. I, you know, I was just like, if the Padres would have made it, I would have, I would have been like, so baseball ended in, uh, you know, September, right? Like, there was no winner. It's just it's one of those things. But, um, I think with this season, with the way the Dodgers are going, again, like everyone always asks me, like, are you worried? And I was like, look, I have a lot of faith in Dave Roberts and I have a lot of faith in the way that he manages this team. And I always say, like, look, he is 
the captain of the plane and we go through turbulence, but he still has a stewardess, you know, serving cookies and, you know, coffee and drinks and stuff. Now, when he tells him to strap in, that's when I'm like, oh no, like this is bad. But he hasn't done that in a long time. And you have to think like with all the injuries, with all the, you know, everything that's happened to the team this year, you don't see the drop in wins. You don't see the, you don't feel the effect of not having Walker Bueller until you get to this point in the season when you really need those guys. But he keeps the plane very steady in the meantime. And then you create these stars that come out of nowhere. Like we have Bobby Miller, we have a couple of other, you know, arms that are kind of rising and, you know, obviously complimenting like Ferguson and things like that. So we, it always amazes me how we always find diamonds in the rough. Right. And for a team that everyone claims is bought and all these things, all those things, we always have like those guys that just work and work and work are the ones that come in and kind of save the day on a daily basis. So it's going to be interesting to see. Um, I believe if they do win the World Series, this is going to be one of the hardest, you know, runs that they're going to have. And then, but at the same time, when you have runs like that, no one can take that away from you. No one can say, oh, well, you had this and you had that. Because realistically from a arms perspective the odds are pretty stacked against them but they're still pretty confident I mean look what they've done um to a lot of teams this season I think the only one that scares me significantly is the Braves um given what happened at Dodger Stadium um and just the offensive power and just the well-roundedness of that is that team um but again baseball really does not have any soft spot for any of that stuff so if you get hot you get hot and if you get cold good luck see you next year well, talking about some of those arms, let's get to get into it, right? Do we have we have on the rundown here? Do we trust Ferguson and then Pepio in the in the in the opener? So let's talk about Caleb Ferguson a little bit. Roger, I'm going to put you on the spot for a little bit and see what you think about Ferguson and what we've seen lately. Should we be concerned? Do we need to move some things around? Yes, I mean, so there was a lot of talk about Ferguson because he he was the opener, right? In the in the in the game in, in um in Colorado, and and he got roughed up for what was it like three in the first, and then. We were like, no, he shouldn't be opening, right? He should be coming in later in the game. And then, you know, today he, he goes in again and he gets pretty roughed up. I think he gave three or four runs again today. So so he's, he's one of those guys that's kind of streaky. You know, he has, his, he has his moments where he's pretty good. He's really pretty solid. And then he has those moments where he struggles. And, like, right now it's like, you know, and I think today they brought him in because they wanted to get him back in there, go out there, get, get your out, you know, get back on a good groove, you know, to finish this thing out. So now – you just got some games in San Francisco and, and, and I'm thinking he's, he's going to be part of the playoff roster. Right. So they got to get him back on because, um, you know, having these two last rough outings is it, pretty, it's, it's going to be pretty bad. And you just got to get this guy straight back on because they're going to need him in the postseason. So it is a little concerning these last two outings, but you know, they still got a couple of days to, to write the ship. At least anything you see that concerns uh, from that perspective with Ferguson. I mean, I think from a fan perspective, like definitely just speaking through my fandom, it's definitely obviously one of those things where you want to root from then you're like, okay, like what's going on. Right. And I think, I think the best way to get through it is to go through it. And I think like Roger said, like there's a couple more games where you kind of just have to throw them out and let him get this out of his system in a way. Right. Because obviously we have seen some highlights of Ferguson that gives me full confidence in him. Right. And obviously every pitcher has, a rough start. Also, our bullpen, just everyone has been really worked on really pretty hard over the last, you know, couple months. Um, like I said, it's been by committee. It's been so many things. And so I think it's one of those things where like you trust because you trust, but also you trust because you have no other choice. Like you right. have to be this guy. You have to step up because you have to. Like, you know what I mean? This is part of what it means to be an MLB player. This is part of what it means to be, you know, a pitcher in your position playing for one of the greatest franchises. Like, you have to because you have to. Like, it's just what you have to do. And I think that's what Ferguson is trying to get back to. And I believe and trust that he will get there. And I think, you know, you bring up a good point. I think with Ferguson uh, and with any pitcher, I think right now things are really magnified. Where when we're days away from the postseason and mm -hmm. it's it's unfair, everyone's gonna go through a streak yeah, they all have. Of course. But if you happen to be that guy and he happens to be that guy that's not at the right time, boy, does that really suck for lack of a better Oh my term, god, yeah. Right? A lot of fans are what have you done for me lately? So it's just, yeah. you know, it's 
like you said, everything is magnified a little more, especially when things are getting closer, things are getting dicier, you know, and then you're, you're going and you're seeing other teams come together more. You're like, wait, like, is this going to be what brings them down? It's like, look, let's just relax. Let's just close out the season. And again, like you just, sometimes you just have to go through it as a pitcher. You just have to get those pitchers out in order for things to kind of rectify themselves. Right. Roger, with um, going down here with Pepio, I know you have here Pepio need opener. Can you kind of explain a little bit just so kind of where you wanted to go with that conversation with Pepio? So, you know, keeping in line with, with so we saw Caleb open for him a couple of days ago, right? And, and Caleb had that rough that rough inning and, and he ended up bringing Pepio. So we've been seeing Pepio kind of piggyback. Um, and every time Pepio's been out there, I mean, dude's been like lights out. You know, he had a career high, I think nine strikeouts in that game. Dude, does he need an opener? I mean, if we're going to see him in the playoffs, I mean, can we just start Pepio? You know, or, or do you think he still needs, or I don't know, is he feeling a little bit more confident maybe coming in, you know, in the second or third inning? Or should he just be starting games? And, you know, and when they brought him in, it was pretty rough. They brought him in with two outs uh, in that first inning. I, I don't think there was still guys on. So he came in, he got out of the situation, and then he went and continued, you know, and he had a, a, a great game. So that's that's my thing. Like, I don't, do you think they would, use an opener for him in the playoffs or are you ready to just here you go start whatever game three well, game four let me say this and i'll put this out there this is the litmus test if you had one game tomorrow and you had to start lynn or pepio who would you start I'll, i know who i would start it would be pepio I, I don't know what both i don't know at least if you can comment or not but roger i don't know what you guys think or because i think that's where the rubber hits the road right now i you got to go with the hot hand right you don't have a very long time to make these decisions and sometimes you have to go with what's hot right now lynn is what it's what he is he's going to give you six seven strong six or seven quality innings I'm, and i'm being cautious to even say strong because i think he can be at times but with, with Lynn, you're going to have to hit. You know he's going to give up three to four runs in about six or seven innings, give you a decent start, but he's going to give up runs. So you better score five or six runs. Pepio, you, you could get a lights out for five innings or so and then start and then bring the bullpen in. Um, th that's my take. I'm, I'm curious to see what the group here thinks. And, and that's the thing, too. Like I guess when you start looking at the postseason rotation, like I think that's kind of where it's at. It's like, do you go with Lynn and Gabe three or do you go with Pepio or do you go with, um, you know, you'd flip them or something. I mean, Lynn has the experience, right. And Pepio, obviously he's a rookie, but he's been, like you said, he's been hot. So it's, it's how do you, how do you maneuver that? And that's kind of back to what Elisa was saying, right. Captain, Captain doc, he's going to yeah. have to fit. He's going to have to figure that out. Right. Like how, how are they going to use Pepio? You know, if they if they wait to use them in the game four, and there might not even be a game four, right? If Dodgers go out and, and win that series in three, you know, everything averted, right? So it's going to be an interesting decision, you know, and we'll you know we'll end up seeing how how that plays out. Yeah, I, I appreciate the way I do trust Roberts, and I have to admit, and I'll say this, I, and I've said this before on the show too this season. Um, I, I have a lot more trust in Roberts this year than I've had in the past, just because I think I think he should be the manager of the year this year. I, I really do believe that. I, I think he took a team that I'll, many of us and most of us does not expect were going to be in this position today here, um, and they are. And I think you have to give credit where credit is due. Um, when you after Mookie and after um, after Freeman, when you go down that lineup, these aren't exactly two three hundred million dollar contracts going all the way down the lineup, right? Same thing with the starting rotation. And so when you're able to put those and to Freeman and to Andrew Friedman, you give that group, I think, a lot of credit. You give them their flowers, like Elisa said, because they put together a team that can win. And as much as I teased about the Giants of the last decade, I think that's one thing they did do well. I remember those days they were able to put together the right guys that would that are going to win games, and they had that that camaraderie. And I don't even want to get into the stuff that's been written about the Padres and not having that camaraderie, right? But it, it's it's funny and it's sad at the same time, right? And so it's a team. And I'm going off a little bit here, but it's a this is the Dodger team, and at least maybe you can chime in on this a little bit because you're there a lot, and this is the team that truly has each other's back and loves each other, right? Yeah, I mean it's one of those things that you see every year though and I think we always have that guy and you know we had Theo Albert at some point and we always had that you right. know we had Rich Hill we always had these guys that just kind of people love to rally around and I 
you know, think that secretly the, the secret weapon is Kike Hernandez coming back and just yeah. what he's brought to the dugout, what he's brought to the clubhouse. You know, obviously the daughter fans are huge Kike fans, but um, he's just brought a sense of just relaxation and fun to that dugout and intensity on his plays. Like, um, you know, I think when you watch him play and you kind of watch the intensity that he brings, you have, I think Rojas, it Rojas yesterday was wearing Kike's shoes and he's wearing his bat. He's using his bat. Like there's that camaraderie there was like, look, whatever it takes to win, you know, I'm going to do it. And when you have a guy like that, that has been through the trenches of, you know, heartbreak World Series losses and went through the joy of a World Series win, you know, you kind of have someone to steer your ship. You have Kershaw, you have Kike, and you have like the veteran guy that you're going to listen to. We also have the young Ish. fun guy <laughs> that is also going to be there to just break up those moments when you are down or you are facing, you know, some, like a pitcher that you can't get a hit on and you find a way to rally around it. You know, I think Kike is one of those guys that really helps push that narrative along and really helps push the team into a situation. Him and the whole Freddie dance thing. I think the fact that they come up with dances every single year <laughs> that just take over stadiums also is a testament to how, well built this team is constantly being rearranged year after year to be at the top of their division you know obviously make it to the playoffs every year i think now it's just kind of getting over that mountaintop um and obviously it's going to be tough giving you know all the injuries we had and bueller and gonsolin and all these things and i think uh but again it's like i say it every year but if any team's going to do it it's going to be the dodgers because they just they they have such a reform farm system they know the proper guys to pull up they put guys in situations that they just become so great like they really work well into the system that doc has kind of built in there and obviously with dino and all those guys it's just it's one thing that's just going to flow together and i think the intensity that they're going to bring they're going to bring it like they've been there all season Elisa, we have a couple of things we wanted to go through still on the rundown, but we know that you have to go and we want to respect your time. <laughs> and it's been a ton of fun having you here. And before I do let you go, uh, not just on behalf of the show, but personally myself, we're very proud of your success, all that you're doing um, professionally, but especially with the Dodgers. <laughs> it's always great to see that smile. It's always great to see that personality. And it's great to see those nails also up on oh, the big screen. <laughs> I know always. those are your pride and joy, so keep doing it. Uh, and, and do it the way that you do. You do a wonderful job at Dodger Stadium, and we look forward to seeing you all the way through the World Series, and that way we get to finally find out what you have waiting for us on your musical melody there on your on your IG post when the Dodgers do hoist that trophy. So look, thank you so much. To play, they're supposed to play on my birthday. They're supposed to be, like, I think it's the NLCS. They okay. will have. They are supposed to have a game on my birthday. They were supposed to have a game on my birthday last year. That obviously didn't happen. <laughs> this year, they're supposed to also play on my birthday, and I am determined to celebrate my birthday at Dodger Stadium because, you know, it, we're, we're also deserving. You have to think, like, look, I know people talk a lot about the 2020 World Series and da 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 whatever. But to me, the biggest thing that I missed from the World Series was our fan base enjoying that series, was yeah. our fan base being there for that series. And Kika said it best when he came back. He was like, I didn't get to say goodbye. Not only that, my last game as a Dodger, I didn't even play it at Dodger Stadium. Like I didn't, you know, I didn't play it where I was supposed to play. You know, I, I wasn't with my fans. I wasn't, was, this, the last time I was here, we didn't have any fans. And so I think, um, I think that's the biggest part that I, I, yeah. I look forward to from last year and this year is just our fan base showing up, our fan base being loud and, that's what the team really feeds off of. They love how hard our fans go for them. I know they push the limit sometimes on how crazy they can be, but there's a reason why we have the best attendance in the MLB mm -hmm. year after year after year. We, this podcast itself, Bleed Los, we bleed Dodger Blue. It, it's part of your culture. It's part of your life. It's not just something you like to do from time to time on a random Wednesday. That's not what being a Dodger fan is all about. So I think for the guys, especially the new guys, when they come in, it's very special to be at Dodger Stadium. It's very special to be there during the postseason. And I think with this new kind of new players that we kind of have coming in to help right the ship, I think hopefully we're going to have a lot of success. And I think our fans are a big part of that. Elisa, thank you so much. Uh, and we'll see you back here soon. 
right. We'll see you guys at the stadium. You guys got to come by. And, and at the parade. We'll see you at the parade. At the parade, yes. <laughs> we, even more importantly. Don't we, even get me started on that. That's yeah, like a whole I other 30-minute podcast about the Lakers and Dodgers. How do the Lakers and Dodgers was. win? Or, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, but, but it goes back to what you said a moment ago. <laughs> We don't. The city doesn't feel like we've had a proper Dodgers celebration yeah. of a World Series because right. of that. So yeah, hopefully we'll see you at the parade. Like the only way to like winning solves everything. So the only way to yeah. stop all that talk is to win. So it's like it's put up or, or shut up. So that's and the Dodgers know that. And I think the players know that. And I think they're ready for it. And I get we got some of the best players in the league. You know, wearing Dodger blue, and we got some of the best young talent also wearing Dodger blue. So I think it's just one of those things that we need to take advantage of and understand like this team is special. We've found many ways to win. I think we're going to continue to do that. Excellent. On that, Elise Hernandez, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. <laughs> thank you guys. Thanks, Elisa. <laughs> See you. Thanks, Elisa. All right. So moving down along to Roger, something we were talking about right before we went on the air that I think is going to be a lot of fun, really cool and pretty interesting um, what the Dodgers and the Braves are both doing, and maybe some other teams will do the same thing, those that have the break anyways, um, for fans that are used to and the Dodger fans have become accustomed to um, during those days in between the regular season and whenever we play our first or second round playoff games, the Dodgers will have open workouts for the fans, and, or just open workouts, I should say, not for the fans, but the fans are invited in, uh, season ticket holders and whatnot are invited in. It's pretty fun. But this time around, it sounds like the Braves and the Dodgers are going to do something a little bit differently. They want to have scrimmage games, right, to simulate actual games during that break. Uh, but to simulate the intensity of a real game, and they're going to allow fans to be a part of the simulation um, and then actually cheer, right? Maybe it's a white team versus a blue team within the Dodgers. And, and so what, what's your take on that, Roger? I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's the best you can do, right, in those few days where you're not playing any baseball. Yeah, so they were. I saw this earlier. They were talking to, to Brian Snitker about the Braves, how they how they prepared. Same thing with the Dodgers, right? Because the Braves, the Braves and the Dodgers both had buys last year in that first round, and they were both knocked off in their first series. So they yeah. both felt the same thing, and they got that layoff. And then maybe it was kind of a little bit hard to kind of pick it up again. So the Braves said that they were going to kind of same thing. The Dodgers have been saying like they need to find a way to to kind of maybe intensify those those practices just to kind of make them feel a little bit, you know, more intense, right? So what they're going to do is they're going to do um, – they're going to have simulated games and they're going to allow fans to come in and 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 watch them. And then today when they were talking to, uh, to Dave, he kind of said the same thing, that they're going to – they're going to have a, a scrimmage games and they're going to allow season ticket members to come in and watch the game. I mean, obviously, like you said, you know, how much can you, you know, make it feel like a playoff game? But I think maybe if there's fans in, in, in the crowd, it'll kind of pump up the guys a little bit more, right, as, and play. Because I remember during COVID, I think um, they were doing that before the season started. They were doing kind of um, inter-squad games. I think they even showed some on TV, but obviously there was nobody in the crowd. So, you know, planning to do that. I think, you know, hopefully that does help them a little bit. You know, there's there's people in, in, in the crowd, you know, kind of pumps them up a little bit. So they don't kind of, you know, they go from that high of playing games, you know, to nothing and then try to pick it back up again. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously never going to be the same like playing actual games. But I think the important thing here is I think you want that, you know, and this is going to sound simple, but you don't want the teams, though you don't want the players to get bored. And, or to sound bored. And I think that can happen. Because you can think, walk and they get bored. Look, they're human beings like anybody else. Um, and so you don't want them to get a little lazy. You don't want them to get a little bored and just go through some of the motions for four or five days in between games or so. So I think if you can get, give it, get the fans involved, play some music, I'm sure they'll have the DJ going. I'm, I'm hoping they'll have a, their public address announcer. Todd Lights may be there trying to simulate a game. That's what I would do, right? Have them come in, announce the players, play some music, have the DJ, try to simulate a game, keep the players loose, keep the players having fun, um, and it'd be a little bit competitive. Uh, I think it's it's, it's it keeps the, the, the team from getting a little stale in those few days because that's got to be a concern. I mean, don't get me wrong. I would not want to play in a three-game series with any of those teams and get knocked out like we said in, in one of the previous segments. Um, and in a perfect world, yes, I, I would love to play that series, sweep that in two games so you get a couple of games in and you're guaranteed to move on to the second round, but that doesn't happen. And so I, I think everyone can appreciate the buy. 
Um, but this isn't the NFL. Unfortunately, in the NFL, those that extra week probably does help you in that buy in the first round. And and you are the team that needs that rest. That rest, you know, outdoes anything else. Um, but in baseball, it can go both ways. And so I'm glad they're going to keep them on their toes and they're going to do something a little bit different. Um, but it is a concern because we have seen that happen to both the Braves and the Dodgers. Um, and let's face it, that's the series everyone wants to see. I don't want to see the Braves, but that's that's I'm sure what everybody else wants to see. And yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, it does it it does seem like oh, that's that's an advantage, right? You get a week off to rest, you know, yeah. get set up your rotation how you want it, right, and do all that stuff. But you know, baseball is, is a grind. These guys are used to playing every day, right? I mean, you know, they go. 30 days and maybe get like one day off, two days off. Right. So it's like, it's a constant thing that they need to be, you know, seeing pitches and kind of just staying in that zone. And, you know, you know, like you said, the team that's coming in, the team that they're going to be and right now, you know, we've been mentioning this, it, it kind of always changes who that team is right now. It's, it's the winner of the Brewers and Marlins at this point. Um, so we'll see how it ends up on Sunday or maybe even Monday if they got to get that extra win. But right now would be the the Brewers or Marlins, and like you said, one of those teams is kind of, is pretty hot. They're going to be pretty hot, right? Because they got to win two out of three games, so yeah. they're they're playing they're playing for their playoff lives, right? And you know all you can hope for in that series is that hey, that it goes three games, right? Use burn up as much as you, of of that other team, you know, as you can, and then you know get a team that's coming in after playing three games. Absolutely. So Sheehan. Postseason, I, I I like what I see. I think it was a surprise for me towards the end of this regular season to see what Sheehan is doing for the Dodgers. And l- let's face it, uh, we we need as many strong arms. I mean, I know it sounds like we really beat that point on this show and probably every other show here in Los Angeles when we talk about the Dodgers. Um, and that they didn't used to be the case, right? The Dodgers of old were a team of pitching, 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 and you got a little bit of hitting. um, And that hasn't been the case. I mean, we're not exactly the number one pitching team in in baseball. So we know that we're going to have to grind it out. And we know we're going to have to really pick and choose those matchups. I keep talking about matchups and how important those matchups. I'm a firm believer, and we'll get to Sheehan in a sec. I'm a firm believer that the game comes down to the matchups. Who's on that mound and who's at the plate? at that moment and nothing gets magnified more in base in, in the playoffs during baseball up uh, in baseball during the playoffs than these matchups right when you make these moves and so i think that's what you have to go with um so it's tough to really kind of speak in generalities the guy for the first round may be the right guy and it may be that we may not see a Sheehan in the first round but we'll see him in the second round or maybe we'll see him in the first not the second maybe i'm getting too into the weeds but what's your take on Sheehan so far and and how do you think he's going to fit in the roster in the postseason so he's he's in so this rocky series going back to the rocky series so we got to see three rookies pitch in that series we saw Sheehan, we saw pepio and we saw miller and they all had career high in strikeouts. Sheehan beat him by one, and he had ten strikeouts in, in his mm-hmm. appearance. So these guys are definitely, definitely bringing in. You know, yes, I get it. Was, it they're playing Colorado, and bet they're pitching in Colorado as well, right? So they got That's ten true. strikeouts. You got ten strikeouts in Colorado. So I mean, how they're going to use him kind of remains to be seen. I mean, I think he will be on the postseason roster. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of talk. Also, we don't know if you know game one. If say they go with Kershaw in game one. Do you piggyback him with Sheehan? You know, if Kershaw gives you five, do you bring in Sheehan after him, right? And then that kind of sets you up, you know, game two, you have Bobby Miller. You know, game three, again, are you doing Lance Lynn, Ryan Pepio, whatever, vice versa, three, four? Or, you know, if you finish that game, that series off in three or four games, right? And then you're you're, you're ready to move on. So um, Ryan Yarbrough, Yarbrough um, he is one that I thought also was going to piggyback. And it looks like maybe he's better at piggybacking. I mean, yeah, I he, got so ru- he, he got roughed up today starting. So, you know, those are the two guys that I think we might see in that piggyback situation would be Sheehan and Yarbrough. Um, but, you know, it remains to be seen. And, you know, you never know. You could see what started to become popular a few years back. I think the Milwaukee Brewers were the first ones to do this against the Dodgers in round one um, in an NLDS playoff a few years back where I forgot who the person was or the pitcher was, but they, they brought out their starter 
only for three three outs, the first inning of I think it might have been game one at Dodger Stadium, and then you never saw the person again. Everyone at the stadium thought that this guy get hurt. What happened? No, that was the plan um, to have him come out for one inning, and then they went on, and then they they went by committee or whatever they their strategy well, was. So well, yeah, we see the, that again. That's the whole opener strategy, like we're like with the Dodgers, right. right? Like, do they do that? Like, say say game three, they go with Lynn, but four, they're going to go with Pepio. Do you have an opener with him? Like, you know, going back to some of the things we talked about, like, would you start Caleb Ferguson as an opener in front of Pepio? Right or Yarbrough, and you know, in front of Pepio, so it's like the way it seems. It seems that we probably will see an opener in one of those four games, um, but it's kind of like, okay, well, how are they gonna? What what I guess what combination are they gonna go right. with? You know, <laughs> how are they gonna? Are they gonna go with like a, a, a you know, a Vesia or a Gratterall in front of like a Pepio or something? Yeah, and I think one of the I think we're gonna get a lot of answers to that as soon as we find out by Monday. Well, actually, not by Monday. What am I talking about? By middle of next once week. They, yeah, once well, they know who they're playing. Yeah, right? once they're that gonna, first round is over. Yeah, they're gonna look at all the matchups and they're gonna yeah. say, you know, you know, and that might determine like, well, who do we go? Maybe we had Lynn for three, but now they'll go with with an opener on four, you know, in game three, and then go with Pepio, right? So, yeah, once once they actually know who they're playing then definitely all these different scenarios are going to you know come into 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 vision so predictions for the weekend who stays in the wild card who stays out what do you think i mean the cubs have been going through it i mean like th- there was two games with the braves that i think they were winning up until like the ninth and they ended up losing so they ended mm-hmm. up getting swept and they're like really going through it uh, so, like I said, they're they're out right now. So if if the Marlins continue to win, I think if they pick up like one or two games, they're 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 in it, right? Um, so I'm thinking now the Marlins are probably going to make it, and yeah, they'll probably win up that you know that continuation game no matter what. So hopefully they win that game, knocks out the Padres, and then yeah, it's probably going to be. I think it, they'll probably get that final wild card spot now. Who's Miami playing over the weekend? They're playing the Pirates. Okay, they suck. So. Who are the yeah. Cubs playing? Who are the Cubs are playing. Let me scroll down here. What do we got? What do we got? Padres are playing the White Sox in Chicago. Uh, Cubs are in Milwaukee. So oh, again, this is the team that's already that's already <laughs> clinched, though. So uh, I mean, but the Bra- the Braves are are already in as well, and they they took it to. There was a thing. I don't know yeah. if you saw it. Like, I meant to bring this up earlier. So Ronald Acuna stole his seventieth base. Yes, base uh, last night. So he steals the base, gets to second. He picks up the base, and he's like, I don't know if he ended up caving, but he picked up the base, right? And then I saw a thing that they actually played. So at this moment, the game was tied, I believe, in the ninth. So he picks up the base, you know, and then the Braves actually played a video. Like right after that, they played a, a, a tribute video. So I don't know how long that was, a minute or two. So I was hearing a lot of people were upset, especially Cubs fans, because – they kind of like iced the Cubs. Like they're out there trying to like get the final out and, you know, so, yeah. and, and go to extra innings. And then I guess like the next couple of pitches later, Ozzy Albies hits a, a walk off single and, and the Braves win. So a lot of people, a lot of Cubs fans were pissed about that. That it, it's kind of weird that they would play a video right in during the inning, basically, after he, he, he did. Yeah. The, uh, it, 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 yeah, it, it was. Look, it's what I call something. It's a very small market move, in my opinion. And Atlanta is not necessarily a small market, but I guess when not, when you know, not a lot of exciting things. Braves fans are going to hate me if they're listening. But when you're in Atlanta, I guess this is this is what you got to celebrate. Um, look, the guy didn't break a record. Yeah, seventy forty. I get it. he didn't break anything. And so, it, it, to me, it wasn't a moment to stop a game. I know the Dodgers would not have stopped the game. So forget about the move, uh, the movie or the video, whatever they showed. I don't think it was worthy to even stop the game. Um, at the moment for pause. I mean, he didn't break anything. Is it a great achievement? Sure. Um, but that's that's about it. I mean, the guy tra- thought it was and Ricky like Henderson said, for a second. But like I said, this is and this is the Cubs. The Cubs who are like fighting yeah, desperately to, to try and get that one yeah. win, two wins that they need. <laughs> and like I said, I don't, you know, did he ice the pitcher for a couple minutes there? And then they end up giving, like I said, the, the walk-off hit. But yeah, I, I kind of heard Cubs, fan, Cubs fans were probably not, not too happy about that one. 
Yeah, yeah. No, and, and so when you look at the matchups for the weekend, you're right. I mean, well, you still got to play the Braves here. Let me pull that up here for a second. Uh, the, the weekend matchups. Uh, what are we, and and here's the thing here. with the Padres. Like, the Padres, Padres got a good... They need a win. They they needed to win out, and like after they played the Dodger series, their their um their schedule was really light. They 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 were really light, so they've gone off on this you know run of winning like eight eight out of ten or whatever it's been. And um and I said this earlier too, like if if they would have started winning say three weeks ago, a month ago, if they would have been playing six four seven three ball, they would have been in that final spot yeah, at least. Absolutely, they would have been in that final spot. Yeah. Uh, d backs are playing the Astros. That's tough for them, too. Um, so they're in Arizona, but they're playing the Astros. they got a couple of tough matchups. That Rangers-Mariners series will be good this weekend as well. They'll play in each other this weekend. You know, one thing I'll say here is the Padres are an outside chance. But if they get in, they are the number one pitching staff in the National League. I would be very, very scared. And if I'm everybody out there in the National League this week, um, I'm rooting for the White Sox because I'm telling you right now, I know it's the Padres, but they have the pitching staff you don't want to fade. Now, they can't hit for you know what, but that doesn't mean they can't get lucky a few games and they got the bats that could light up. I'm just saying, that's a team that would scare me because of who you may have to face. I, I still don't think they get in. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't the, think the so C- either. The Cubs and, and the Marlins would have to not win any more games. I could see maybe the Cubs not winning another game. But I think the Marlins are going to pick up another winner too. So yeah, so that that will that will cut out, and it sucks for Padres fans because they're like, oh, we still got a chance, and then it's going to come down to like the final, you know, two games of the yeah. season. And they'll be like, oh no, you're out. Oh so. man, that's that's. Uh, I'm glad we're not in that position. Boy, that's that's nerve wracking. All right, predictions for the weekend. What do you think? What do the Dodgers do this weekend? I know it's a meaningless weekend, but you got three games against the Giants. What do you think happens? Um, I'm hoping they get the two wins to get to 100. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd like to see that, like I said, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's like who who are they? Are they, I'm sure they're going to be resting a lot of guys. Um, you know, the, the Giants are out of it. I mean, it's going to be like uh, probably spring training games. That's probably what we're going to yeah. see this weekend. Um, but I still, I'll, t- I'll still go with the Dodgers two out of three. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing too. I think they do two out of three as well against the Giants up at home. I think they're going to try to get that 100. It would be kind of nice. And the Giants may not want them to get that 100th win. So maybe there will be a little bit of competition there over the weekend. So that'll be a lot of fun. So, all right. Well, on that, hey, another great show. Oh, go ahead, Roger. Yeah. I was just going to say real quick. So this is on, on YouTube only. So if you've, you've stumbled, pro, you know, stumbled and found us and you're you know, checking us out and seeing what this is, we are doing – a giveaway for a Joe Kelly bobblehead, the one that right. was given out last last uh, last weekend. Um, it's a pretty cool bobblehead for you know Dodger bobblehead. You know, pretty pretty cool him and his mariachi outfit. Um, so all you got to do to enter is just hit that subscribe button. Once we hit a thousand, which we're getting pretty close, and I'm sure with this it's gonna move pretty fast. Once we get that thousand, we'll go ahead and pick a winner and send you out the bobblehead. And we'll see. Maybe we might add a couple other things with that, but for right now it's the bobblehead. There you go. You heard it now. Go ahead and subscribe. Follow us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on all the socials, as they like to say. Um, and we always are very happy for you to join us. Uh, Juan will be back soon, I'm sure, on the show here and the rest of the gang. So uh, thank you for letting me keep the seat warm here, Juan. And thank you, Roger, for letting me on here on the show. I know I'll be back here sometime in the future. we got a lot of baseball, hopefully a lot more baseball, all the way through the end of October as we head into the last final weekend against the Giants. Enjoy, everybody. Enjoy the Dodger baseball this weekend. Uh, and because we're then without baseball for about five, yeah, five days until game one, which is scheduled for the following Saturday at Dodger Stadium. I will be at game two as a fan with my family on that Monday for game two. So we're, we're, we'll be excited to do that. And uh, yeah, that wraps things up. Roger, it was fun. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening also to the Bleed Lows podcast. Have a good one. Yeah.